How does a C2H4 ethylene or ethane molecule interact with a transition metal? Uh, there are two different ways. So over here on the left hand side, you have this transition metal bonded to some uh, spectator ligands. Uh, and this transition metal is also bonded to the two carbon atoms of this ethylene molecule. There are two sigma bonds. There are four sigma bonding electrons. The two red ones come from the two carbon atoms. And the two blue ones come from the transition metal. If you look at this MO picture here, it's more clear. So first, when you have a pi bonding orbital, it's made of two p orbitals of the two carbon atoms. And then you have one electron, the red one, coming from each p orbital of the carbon. So, but in this case, when this ethylene interacts with the metal, the two red arrows or two p electrons from the two carbon atoms are now interacting with two d electrons from the transition metal. So look here, you have a d orbital here, and it's using just one lobe with white color to interact with the two p orbitals at the same time. And you have actually a blue d electron here with this uh, uh, red uh, p electron from the carbon forming a sigma bond here. And similarly, a second sigma bond is formed between the metal and the p orbital of the second carbon. So this is a sigma bond and um, this is also a sigma bond. To better understand this, you can replace this MLN with a single oxygen atom in your head. And then you can clearly see this CO sigma bond, this CO sigma bond in this so-called ethylene oxide structure. There's a second way of this metal interacting with ethylene. I got this picture from Wikipedia. And I believe the direction of this arrow is wrong. And that's why I drew another arrow with enough thickness to cover the original arrow in the picture from Wikipedia. I believe the electron flows from the metal to the ethylene molecule. And why? We can look at this MO picture. And actually, this picture is from the same Wikipedia page, and this one is correct. So you can tell you have a, another d orbital. So this one. This one is different from this one. Okay. So if we define this axis to be x-axis, you are using actually this d orbital, this dx squared minus y squared orbital to interact with the two p orbitals of the carbon atoms, okay? And this one is dxy, okay? This one is dxy. And over here, you can see this dxy orbital is interacting with not the pi orbital, but the pi star of this ethylene. And uh, in a free ethylene molecule, the pi star anti-bonding orbital is empty. There's no electron in this pi star. So the electron must flow from a occupied d orbital, in this case dxy, to the empty pi star of the ethylene. So the direction of electron flow has got to be from the metal to the ethylene molecule. And what kind of interaction is this? Well, it involves three centers, one metal and one carbon and a second carbon, three center. But this is not a sigma bond. This is a pi type bond. It's not strictly a pi bond. If you have a pi bond, usually we are talking about just two centers. And then you have uh, two p orbitals from this uh, two centers forming uh, constructive interference. So in this case, we have uh, three centers, 
we have two carbon nuclei and one metal nucleus forming this pi type uh, interaction. You can clearly see this is shoulder to shoulder interaction. And there's another way to uh, distinguish sigma bonds from pi bonds. So usually if you have just two centers, that's really easy. You just look at this, uh, um, the bonding orbital. And uh, you count the number of uh, nodes or nodal surfaces uh, in this bonding orbital that uh, contain the molecular axis. Uh, in this case, we have three centers, so really it's, it's, there's no way to uh, uh, draw a uh, uh, axis between two centers. But we can still draw a uh, dashed line here um, from the center of the metal to the center of the ethylene here. So this, this dashed line. And then we look at this uh, bonding orbital. And in this bonding orbital, there's one nodal surface. And this is the bon uh, nodal surface. I'm sorry, I can only show you uh, this uh, side view of this nodal surface. And this nodal surface does contain the uh, uh, quote molecular axis, end quote, because again, this is actually three centered. I'm pointing uh, this dash line uh, connects the center of the metal and the center of the ethylene molecule. But my point is the nodal surface, one nodal surface contains this dash line. That means it's a pi type bond. Uh, what if you have zero nodal surface that contains the molecular or bonding axis? That means it's a sigma bond. What if you have two nodal surfaces that contain the um, uh, internuclear um, axis for a two-center bond? Again, it's a, a, a delta bond. So you have sigma, pi, and delta bonds that uh, have zero one or two nodal surfaces that contain the uh, molecular axis or bonding axis. All right, okay, on the bottom, uh, there's uh, analysis about the oxidation number. Uh, when we uh, calculate the oxidation number of the transition metal, uh, you need to assign the uh, shared sigma bonding electrons to the ligands. All right, so we're gonna assign these two electrons to this carbon that will make this carbon negative one charge. I'm gonna assign these two electrons also to this carbon and make it negative one charge. So overall, this ethylene becomes negative two charged and this metal becomes plus two charged. Therefore, the oxidation number of the transition metal here in this structure is plus two. Uh, again, when we uh, compute the oxidation number of the metal, uh, we do not uh, consider the pi back bonding. So in this case, although electrons flow from the transition metal to the pi star empty orbital, let's not take that into account. And if that's the case, uh, this transition metal has a zero oxidation number. This ethylene molecule also has a zero oxidation number. Uh, it's similar to uh, a different um, pi back bonding in uh, the metal carbonyl complex. However, uh, in this metal carbonyl complex, this metal only uh, donate D electrons to the carbon. And then the uh, one of the carbon oxygen uh, pi bonding electrons uh, become the lone pair electrons of the oxygen atom. So it's a little different over here, uh, this uh, metal is interacting with both carbons simultaneously. Look at this constructed interference and look at this constructed interference. Uh, in the uh, metal carbonyl complex, the metal interacts with only the carbon atom. Uh, and uh, it does affect the oxygen indirectly, but uh, uh, directly the metal is uh, donating D electrons to the carbon only. Um, and or, but you can all, uh, you can say this, this uh, the electrons are donated into uh, the uh, one side of the pi star of this CO bond. 
and uh, that weakens uh, one of the pi bonds of carbonyl and make this uh, bond order between carbon and oxygen uh, two instead of three. But either way, when we count the number of, uh, when we count the oxidation number of the metal, we should neglect the pi back bonding. 